गुड मॉर्निंग व्यूअर्स एंड वेलकम टू ट्रांस इंडिया रियल पीपल रियल इमोशंस वी कंटिन्यू आर जर्नी एट दी ऑटो एक्सपो एंड लर्न मोर अबाउट हाउ मैन्युफैक्चर आर गियरिंग दम फॉर नॉट जस्ट अ चैलेंजिंग बट ऑल्सो अ क्लीनर फ्यूचर इंडिया लीडिंग ट्रक मेकर अशोक लेलैंड has been taking giant strides to cater to the demands of the government and wishes of the customers a lot of research and development has been happening at its world class tech center with the aim to get the environment cleaner and at the same time give the customers products that offer the lowest cost of operation with trucks getting expensive especially after the introduction of bs6 emission norms the transport industry has been reeling under a lot of pressure due to shrinking margins thus the value of a product that balances economics and performance cannot be undermined ashok leland which turned 75 last year also unveiled its new logo at the auto expo trans india spoke to dr n charavanan chief technology officer at ashok leland just after the unveil of the new logo coming up after this very short break our interaction with dr n charavanan to know more about the new technologies and also the new logo See you on the other side of the break. You are watching Trans India, real people, real emotions. Mahindra ye guarantee dete hain ki unka Blazo X sabse zyada mileage deta hai. Warna kar dijiye truck Cut. wapas. Sorry Ajay, Mahindra Furio hai. Action! Mahindra guarantee dete hain ki unka Furio sabse zyada mileage deta hai. Nahi to Actually Jayo, Mahindra Jayo hai. Thoda change hai and action! Mahindra ye guarantee dete hain ki unka Jayo sabse चल क्या रहा है यहाँ पे मैम ये चारों ट्रक ज्यादा माइलेज देते हैं चारों तो ऐसा बोलो ना ब्लेजो एक्स फ्यूरियो फ्यूरियो सेवन और जय महिंद्रा के ये सभी ट्रक्स देते हैं सबसे ज्यादा माइलेज की गारंटी नहीं तो कर दीजिए इन्हें वापस महिंद्रा देश की सबसे ज्यादा माइलेज देने वाली ट्रक रेंज वेलकम बैक टू ट्रांस इंडिया रियल पीपल रियल इमोशन We are in conversation with the Chief Technology Officer of Ashok Leyland, Dr. N. Charavanan, at the Ashok Leyland Pavilion at Auto Expo 2023, alongside the brand new logo of the company. So, Dr. Since we are by the logo, can you tell us about this brand image change? I think uh, you know the history. During the 75 years, uh, so 75 years is a good time to start looking at and saying what is it we stand for. It's not that. The older tagline of "Aapki Jai Hind" is this. Anything wrong with that? But the fact is that the more you look at it, everything is changing. People's aspirations are changing. Technology is changing. So the idea is, no dream is too far, right? And that's literally what it is. We need to dream. We need to be like young kids again, right? The idea is to look at what is that we want to be in the next 75 years. and this way we thought it's a appropriate time for us to say let's look at and say how do we become more aspirational than what we are and even in the color you see a little bit more of tinge of green that signifies the sustainability element of where we see the future and that's sort of the it's a combination of factors i would say so talking about the future we can see a lot of change happening in the last few years you know with the alternative fuels how does it play in play i think uh, the way i look at it is any disruption is fantastic for a player like us uh it allows us to disrupt the market possibly it allows us if done right to have the potential to be number 1 not number 2 so i think if we can play the change card well uh we could potentially leave frog the competition and that is with that with that idea you see a lot of vehicles whose portfolio shows the entire gamut of possibilities and what you notice around technologies that we have displayed is indigenous to us it is not imported it is not from so we are saying we have the capability we have a modular platform from a truck architecture perspective we have the entire range of modular engine platform we can develop any fuel on ic and therefore if done right done frugally right at the customer we can actually change the market in terms of uh, what is acceptable so to before we come to what we display here do you think things are happening too fast from an oem perspective i mean you have to really go really quick two ways to look at it either you can say it is happening too fast uh, government please help us don't i think that is one way to look at it i'm not saying right or wrong but i think the better way to look at it and say what is it i can do to change myself to be much more agile 
Yeah. There are two aspects to it. One is the technical aspect to it. The other is the cultural aspect to it. We have to start thinking like a startup. I cannot be thinking like a seven-year-old legacy company. I have to think and say, I, I know I can control certain factors. Some I cannot control. What I cannot control, I'm going to get better at managing it by being faster to the market, being better. And that's the approach. So I, there is no way I'm going to be able to control the government, right? I mean, I'm going to say, I can do this better. Let me get, how do I do things so I mitigate any last minute challenges. So what do we have on display today? So we have the entire gamut of vehicles. We have a small CNG based 14 seater passenger vehicle. Next to it, we have a large 50 ton LNG truck. Then we have a hydrogen IC based uh, truck, which is 41 ton. Then we have battery electric vehicle, which is about the POS platform 12 ton truck. Then we have a fuel cell uh, truck and, and then the 15.5 CNG bus. So they almost everything is alternate fuel. CNG, LNG, battery electric vehicle, hydrogen fuel cell, hydrogen ice. I think it's probably the, from our perspective, the most comprehensive portfolio we put together in the expo. But going forward, do you see the availability of these fuels getting better and easy? Because that is a challenge currently. It'll, it'll remain a challenge, right? I think un unlike unlike diesel, where it is available, no questions asked. Any nook and corner, you go, you get diesel fuel, petrol. It's, uh, the challenge will always remain for alternate fuels. That's why the penetration of these fuels into the market will happen gradually. Yeah, it'll happen in pockets. It won't happen homage across the country, right? For example, battery electric vehicles, you're seeing penetration in intracity vehicles. And that will now come into uh, LCVs, intracity. Then maybe point to point applications. LNG will probably happen long distance point to point. CNG again, intracity and some point to point. I think what will happen is you see a significant fragmentation of the market. Diesel will not just move to EVs in commercial vehicles. Some will move to EV, some will move to CNG, some LNG, and some so on and so forth. And how does the costing of all this work out? I mean, from a transporter's point to future? I think CNG, LNG will be comparable at some point to a diesel vehicle, little bit incremental. So, therefore, the same mindset and the economics could apply. But when you start moving towards hydrogen or battery electric vehicle, the concept has to be from Acquisition cost, total cost of ownership. And that's a mind shift change. And that's not easy because suddenly you tell me, don't worry about initial cost, you'll get this saving over the lifetime. And that's a concept, I think it's not just about the uh, customer buying it, there has to be the banks allowing you, uh, giving you the uh, loan for a longer period, the larger amount. So that that will take some time. It will take one, two cycles to happen. So you, you surely have to educate the truckers, the transporters into shifting to these fuels. That, that's a different exercise for you. Absolutely. And if you think of a fleet customer. Let's say he has 1000 vehicles and he's trying to replace 200 vehicles. Suddenly he has 800 vehicles, diesel vehicles, 200 vehicles, CNG. Now he has talk about what happens to my service, my spares. So it is going to be a fairly challenging, not just OEM. Even for a fleet customer, when they shift, the transition is going to be very, very challenging. He's dealing with multi fuel fleets, uh, his, his leverage in terms of even fuel buying goes down. I mean, in a multiple hour challenges, right? I mean, these are all uh, things to consider. Right, Doctor, thank you so much. Pleasure. Well, friends, there is no doubt that technology is going to play a very important role in not just the automobile, but also the road transport industry. Youngsters, in the transport industry are getting in a lot of technology which is making business not only simpler but also more efficient and profitable. Next week we will be talking to Mr. Puneet Agarwal of CJ Darsal who also happens to be the youngest president of All India Transporters Welfare Association. Puneet talks about technology and what impact technology can have on the road transport business. We will see you again next Sunday. Do remember to subscribe to our channel. And until next week, stay safe. Jai Hind.